Hey, what's up guys? John here. West Hollywood is moving to defund the police. You have to ask yourself, why would you do such a thing? Why would you want to defund the police? If you defund the police, then ultimately there's going to be likely more crime, especially when we're in an inflationary environment and there's already statistics proving that crime is going to increase. West Hollywood crimes up over 130% in the last 12 months. You have rising gas prices, a much more challenging world. And when you move into a direction to where you're gonna remove any type of consequence for a crime, any logical person would say, what is the risk, what is the reward? If the risk is removed and the reward is there, what's gonna happen? More people are gonna commit crimes. We look at what's happening right now, for example, this just occurred two days ago, where this, is, this couple years ago would have been a life sentence, but now it's a catch and release. So you have these types of crimes that are catches and release, and then you have a couple dynamics that are unfolding, which is just horrible for the residents of West Hollywood and horrible for all of us. Look at this. So now with Zillow, right, these properties, these criminals, do you think that they're just winging it? No, they're using technology. They're looking at what areas are the most expensive, where people are that have the nice cars, they have the nice watches. They can find all this stuff out on Zillow. They simply go on the website and they're like, okay, here's West Hollywood right here, you know, three and a half million dollars here, you know, condos here for 800,000, but if we go north of Sunset, 7.6 million, you know, numbers, big, big, big numbers here. 2.7 million, $9 million, 7.6 million, 34 million, uh, 12.8 million, 27 million, 45 million, all these mansions, right? So they'll click on a house and be like, okay, you know, we're not gonna go 45 million, but maybe we'll go 27. And they click the, the listing, they're like, okay, this is the front door. Let's see where, okay, we, there's a garage right here. And then they find entry points. There's a master bedroom with a large, uh, you know, glass uh, door, right? Or a glass, a sliding glass door, right? So they have all these different properties. It's, it, the big question is, what's gonna happen to these neighborhoods? Right? What's gonna to happen to these beautiful luxury neighborhoods when you have no police? Would you wanna personally live in a neighborhood where you're spending five million, 10 million, 20 million dollars, and then there's no police and there's criminals running rampant, right? It's almost like Gotham, like a, a Batman movie, right? This is exactly what Los Angeles is turning into, and this is almost as, as if it's what they want, right? It's almost as if it's what they want, and maybe it is, and here's why. So West Hollywood votes to defund Sheriff's Department despite soaring crime. West Hollywood has voted to slash law enforcement funding, leaving California City famous for its bustling Sunset Strip nightlife destinations with up to five fewer deputies on patrol despite skyrocketing crime rates in the area. The council passed a budget three to two votes on Monday with Mayor Laura Lauren Meister and Councilman John Erickson voting against it, reported Wehoville.com. Meanwhile, the West Hollywood City Council approved keeping bars open until 4 a.m. and increased funding for Russian Arts Festival. The vote came just three months after the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department reported the crime in West Hollywood jumped a startling 137% in February 2022 compared to that same time last year. If it was, if it jumped 137% in 12 months, and that was with police. What will it be as inflation continues to soar and there is no police? 200, 250, 300%, maybe more, right? What I think is very likely to happen is I think that these wealthy people are gonna say, you know what, forget this. I'm gonna go into a different area. I'm gonna sell my house. I'm gonna move here because, you know, living a beautiful life and, and admiring the city view from your, you know, mega mansion is one thing but safety is another, right? And I think people, they prize safety more than anything else. With the public safety crisis and residents, businesses and tourists expecting us to deliver, I do not think this approach, while timed out, would help the community achieve our goals or creating a safer West Hollywood, Erickson wrote in a tweet explaining why he voted to reject the budget. The trendy community of 35,000 residents, which is home to some of LA County's most buzzworthy Restaurants and clubs has recently become a destination for pickpockets. More than that, we're seeing nonstop, uh, you know, situations where people are trying to get their Rolexes, they're trying to take their paddock watches, they're trying to, you know, bust the fronts of uh, jewelry stores and steal millions of dollars in jewelry. We've seen that happen uh, on two occasions in Beverly Hills over the last six months, where they take down the uh, 
the front windows of jewelry stores. We're seeing people, I saw a video the other day where you know a man was thrown down on the street beside his Ferrari and they tried to take his watch, right? I saw another video last week where people were driving down the street, they get out of the car with their mask on and a guy, he was, looks like he was walking to his G-Wagon, took off his Rolex and threw it over the fence so that they wouldn't get his watch, right? They threw it into a, you know, someone's yard. But it was just a high gated, probably eight foot, seven foot fence and uh, with hedges and they weren't able to get his watch. But this is the type of you know atmosphere that we're in right now. Tuesday's council vote means that the next two years, funds that were meant to pay the salaries of the five sheriff's deputies will be funneled instead to the city's block by block program, which provides unarmed security ambassadors. Imagine this. Imagine you have a child or two children or a mother you have to take care of or you know yourself to take care of. You don't have any money, right? You don't have any money. There's no employment. There's no job opportunities and you need to find a way to provide for yourself. And there's this neighborhood with multi-million dollar mansions and uh, you're like, you know what? That makes sense. There's no consequence. I'm going to go for it. And then you get there and there's a, an armed security ambassador trying to talk reason to you and all he has is a little bit of pepper spray. What do you think is going to happen? the guy's probably going to get hit and then you're going to probably commit the crime. That's what that is probably what's going to happen, right? That I believe is what is going to be the situation. We're going to start to see these armed security ambassadors offering very little safety and security to the community. What, what communicates security is force. If you don't have force and you aren't able to stop a threat, then that threat will stop you. Prioritizing people's safety doesn't just mean people with badges and guns in the street. Councilman Lindsay Horef said during the meeting, we have to find another way to keep our residents safe in a way that is affordable. Essentially saying that it's not affordable. Police aren't affordable. Almost kind of like what Mayor Adams was saying. Mayor Adams said in New York that we should look into drones, right? Drones, 100,000, I think it was $104,000 a drone that would patrol the city, right? Patrol the city. What do you think is going to happen here? If they're saying that police are not affordable and in New York, they're talking about drones I believe we're going to be moving into a direction in which they want drones throughout, you know, throughout cities to where they can surveil and watch everyone and make sure everyone is safe, right? That's what I think is happening. I think this is what we're wa watching and witnessing. And I think that for us to get from where we are right now to where we are headed, there's going to have to be a demand, right? There's going to have to be a demand for change. And, you know, this I think is going to probably be that change. I really do. But this is probably a year, two years out. Under the new budget, the first two deputies will be removed in six months and three more will follow six months after that. But an entertainment policing team, that's a very great term for it. It is an entertainment policing team because it's nothing but entertainment. Policing team deputy will be restored. Meister, a Democrat, has been vocal, an opponent of reducing the number of deputies patrolling the streets and many local business owners and residents also have expressed some serious concerns about public safety. I'm not going to vote for the budget if we have to cut our sheriff's funds. First of all, nobody has the gun problem that we have in this country. You can't expect us to have a public safety team or most of the people aren't armed in order to defend our citizens. Mayor Pro Temp, right, countered by saying that 30 safety ambassadors who will be taking over patrol duties are represented more for the buck than a sheriff, right, more for the buck. With a public safety crisis in residents, businesses, and tourists expecting us to deliver, I do not think this approach, while timed out, would help the community achieve our goals of creating a safer West Hollywood. Reimagining police means reallocating funding. You can't just say it without actually doing it, period, she said. At the same time, a council voted to increase the budget of Russian Arm Festival from 14000 to 50000 This is a... Uh, this is... This is only going to get crazier. I promise you, this is only going to get crazier. 2020, I said 2021 is going to be crazier than 2020. 2022 is going to be crazier than 2021. 2023 is going to be crazier than 2022. We're stepping into insanity. We really are. I think that as we move into this direction, that there's going to be a lot of uncertainty. And I think it's up to us to kind of prepare for that uncertainty. We can't really bank on a third party helping us or you know, doing what we think would be the right thing. It's up to us. It's up to us to provide for our families that safety and security. And uh, if people, I can almost imagine, I can almost bet people are going to relocate. They're not gonna wanna you know, work their whole life to have this multi-million dollar mansion and feel as though 
you know, they're not even safe going there, right? I don't think I don't think that's what people are going to want. I think people are going to want change. I think people are probably going to leave California more and more and more in droves, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how this whole thing unfolds. What do you think about this entire situation? Drop your comments below. Hit the like button. Subscribe. We're also subscribed on my second channel. It's going to be an interactive call-in show and a podcast starting next week. Also, uh, subscribe over on uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram up in the banner. If you need help fixing your credit, I have an, an amazing in-house credit repair team. An absolutely amazing in-house, in-house credit repair team. If you want to get on the YouTube grind with me, start an online business and scale through YouTube, cashnow.video. And if you would like to invest in real estate when things hit the fan, which I honestly think that this is definitely going to happen. Not saying specifically West Hollywood, but I'm saying as a country, I think this is going to happen. We're over leveraged to the point of no return. We're in this high inflationary environment as interest rates rise and we step into this affordability crisis. There's so many things happening right now that are not great for the everyday consumer. $1.146 trillion in outstanding credit card debt. Almost $1.5 trillion in outstanding auto loans and 1.7 trillion in student loans. You think about this, a one point, you're about a, about a trillion five in auto loans. Most of these people bought cars over the last three, four, five years. And what's happened over the last three, four, five years? Auto insurance has probably jumped by 30 or 40%. Gas prices have jumped by 100%. And you know a lot of these people are just gonna be upside down in their cars. We're, we're witnessing just in, in a, a real problem, a real, real problem. And I think it's all up to all of us to prepare for it. And I think a great way to do it is by investing in real estate, having a great online business, and of course, having great credit so you can access capital. I'd love to help you. Cash now out video, and I'll see you in the next one. If you're interested in being sponsored on my YouTube channel, visit cashnow.video forward slash sponsor and fill out the application.